guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Gladiator's Blood for Roses. In Gladiator's Blood for Roses, you're going to be playing two to five players and you're going to be playing as what they call Ludus. Ludus are basically the owners of gladiators and you'll be basically trying to gather specific gladiators based on how you're going to be bidding and you're going to put them on your area. Those specific Ludus are going to have specific abilities that help the gladiators and the gladiators will have their own unique passive and active abilities that they can use once every other turn and each gladiator is also going to have their own unique deck. Players are then going to go ahead and assign cards on their active turn and play it now and everyone else is going to go back and forth between the players that the uh, gladiator chooses to fight. Gladiators are trying to become the only remaining gladiator in the arena, and once that happens, the game is going to end for that specific round. Afterwards, you're going to have another round and continue. Now, what's interesting about this game is, like I was saying, on these boards here, there's going to be trophies or uh, things you're going to gain, little awards, as you progress. And every time you succeed, you're going to basically be getting more and more victory points, depending on how you did each contest. Not only that, but depending on who you bid in a three or more player game, you can choose to play uh, place your bets on other players' gladiators in hopes that they win, in hopes that you're going to gain specific points. So you can try and make your gladiator win first, second, third, depending on how you want to do it, or you can specifically focus on the, your opponents and making sure that they win so that you get more victory points that's all that matters in this game. Like I said before, it plays two to five players. It takes about an hour or so to play, depending on how many times you're playing the game and how many rounds. There's a bunch of different variables in that, but uh, in the end, that is basically the idea, is trying to accomplish your goals as the uh, Ludus against all the gladiators in Gladiators uh, Blood for Roses. Okay, let's go ahead and take you down below. I will show you everything you get in the game and then we'll talk about how to play. So here we have the game Gladiators Blood for Roses and everything you see uh, coming with the game. Of course, you're going to get a bunch of gladiators. There's eight total different types of gladiators in this game, as well as you're going to be getting player boards. These player boards are actually going to be Ludus characters, characters that own the gladiators, a place to place your gladiator, a place for all the gladiators fame, and then each Ludus will have its own unique passive ability that will allow you to basically gain specific things during contests. Uh, additionally, you're going to get a board for the start starting player along with a bidding area where you're going to have the gladiators and you can choose to bid on the gladiator that you'd like to pick up and of course the cost to uh, bidding on certain gladiators maybe you don't have enough to actually purchase them so you'll be utilizing this as kind of a banking system that will cost you points at the end of the game. There is additionally these contest cards here these contest cards here are basically the different rounds of gameplay in which gladiator is going to try and score points and depending on how many of these you play is how long the game will go. The these over here are basically a pedal tokens, and these are victory points in which you can gain. There's uh, symbols of three and one, and then these here are your health tokens. As your characters take damage based on the character's HP, the characters will get wiped out, and the player who has the remaining gladiator is going to win active player tokens and turn order tokens and then the three different gladiator decks that you can draw there basically anybody can pull from these decks you've got helmets you're going to have the swords and the shields basically helmets are kind of like special active abilities these swords are going to be more of combat abilities and then these guys over here the uh, defensive cards are going to be used to defend yourself against combative cards these over here when you win contests or certain rewards for certain cards you play you'll be placing them down on your board depending on how well you do for each of the different contests and you're trying to virtually trying to fill up this board here that has actually actives that you can gain as you fill it up. These, like I said before, are the characters in which you're going to be playing with, depending on the number of players, and the board will tell you that as well. Gambling tokens for a three or more player game, you're going to be giving yourself gambling tokens for each of the different gladiators, and you can go ahead and bid on your own or any gladiator, and that will be based on the symbols in the top right-hand corner. Based on that character's turn order, what you can gain for choosing that champion having them win. However, if you bid on a character that doesn't win, you get nothing. There's tactical cards, and each player is going to get their own tactical deck of, I believe, about five or so cards. Each of the Ludus's have their own unique tactic cards, and you'll be able to choose one for each tournament that you can go ahead and use as a once-only ability. Sponsors work similarly to the tactics cards. They will give you certain things like once per combat, play this card and negate a card that was just played on you by another gladiator. There's an A, B, A, and a B deck for the sponsor deck, and you'll get to choose one of either of the two of the two cards you get to draw 
And finally, you'll get the box of, for the game, the rule book, as well as the setup piece of uh, paper. And then the final thing is that each gladiator has their own unique deck of nine cards that will be played out throughout the game. That's pretty much what you're going to get in the game, gladiators. Let's go ahead and take a look down below and I'll show you how to play a game. So here we have Gladiator's Blood for Roses all set up. And as you can see, we've got three players here. There are four Gladiators set out, so it's the number of players plus one. And the additional Gladiators are over here. We won't use them until maybe the next contest. Additionally, every player has a sponsor card that they have chosen from the A and B deck, so you won't need these again until the next time. And tactics as well. Everybody has their own unique tactics decks. It'll tell you which Ludus is going to be the one who gets your tactics uh, set up, and then every player actually gets to choose one of the five tactics cards to use for the specific event. This is the specific league, or um, sorry, the specific event. This is called Legates Laurels, and it tells you how many pedals are on this event, which are basically victory points, and it says how much you can trade your pedals in for a specific uh, reward, whether it be bronze, silver, or gold. Set aside my pedals and damage, as well as setting aside the player decks here. And I'm uh, going to go ahead and start it up and show you how it works. So basically the number of players plus one is the different gladiators here starting with Akilla going all the way to Astronox and then everybody has their gambling tokens based on the gladiators that are able to be chosen the player who first walked on the sand is the player who will start in the first position everybody else just goes randomly from one all the way to five and the bidding of the game is going to begin and it's pretty simple how that works it, basically Messana is going to go ahead and start and they can place on any of these areas here from the lowest all the way up to here based on the gladiator if you don't want to spend anything that might be a good spot but we'll go ahead and show you how bidding works so maybe he wants Kalanido, which is going to be this guy over here he'll go ahead and place it right there which is going to insinuate his because it's going to cost him one bronze medal for that now if Gal Gallicus wants it then he actually has to spend two silver in which case Masana is going to go ahead and drop down which only cost which will still cost him one bronze but he'll get Hilaris Fucus, uh, in which case now Caputa is going to get a chance to go. And uh, this player, if he wants Kaleido, he's actually going to go here. Or he can choose this character here for one, or choosing this one. If you choose this one, this guy will go down. It's free for him. So he has any of these options. But basically, he has to outbid the other players for these two. He'll just go ahead and select that one. That one's free, Akela. After that, then everybody has to pay their bids. And if you can, you're going to go ahead and go on this track here. And there's six total points that are going to cost you throughout the game. So first of all, Gallicus is going to go ahead and spend two. So he'll go here. And then Me Messana is going to spend one. And then finally, Kapua is going to go ahead and spend zero. So he actually doesn't go on the board right now. This is basically end of the game. You're going to lose points based on being on this board here. Then you know, I'll go ahead and give the player the first player marker, which was Masana. And these actually have numbers on them. And so uh, it was uh, this guy here. And then it was this guy. And I believe this guy. These are not needed because you're not playing any more than three players right now. Then, after that, uh, everybody's going to get their gladiators. So, as you can see, Gallicus went ahead and got Kalanido. He's going to get plus three petals, so that's what it says. And we're going to go ahead and look for Gallicus's thing. This is him right here, Ludo Gallicus. He's going to go ahead and put his gladiator there, along with his petals. And then the next player is going to be Masana, and they're getting this one here. I'm going to go ahead and put this one over here, and along with their petals. And then the next player is going to go ahead and get Aquila, and that's going to go right here along with the four petals. Now that's done, you're not going to be using this gladiator, so we're going to put them away. And the game is pretty much ready to go. They've got their gladiators, and now they're going to go ahead and get their gladiator decks. And based on the symbols of the cards is what decks you're going to be using. So for instance, this guy here has this deck. This guy here has double swords, so you look for double swords, and it'll be this deck here. And this player's got pitchforks, so this guy is going to take this pitchfork deck. The rest of these decks won't be used for this specific tournament, so you can go ahead and set those aside as well. Then every single player will have the opportunity to basically gamble. And you can go ahead and gamble on which guy you want to win. And why you want to do that is going to be based on the, the, the turn order. So one, two, and three, and the person you're choosing. So for instance, this guy is in the third position, which means that if you bet on him and he, and he wins, you're going to get a silver medal. He's in the second. So if he wins and you bet on him, you'll get a silver. And then finally, this one over here is in the first position. You'll get a bronze if he wins. So everybody's going to go ahead and select one of the three that have been 
chosen, putting their bet down, removing the rest, you won't need the rest, and it'll be a secret as to which one you want to go ahead and bet on. And you can that, that kind of makes it available for you can choose your own gladiator, or if you want, you can actually go ahead and choose a gladiator that is not yours, which kind of erupts into some interesting ways of playing. Then each player is going to form a deck with these cards and the cards they start with, and they're going to get a certain number based on the number of players. In a two-player game, I think it's 15 cards, and in a 18, and then in this one, I think it's 14. So we're going to do 14 cards, and you can go ahead and look at the characters. They're going to have a certain type of cards. Each of these decks are individual, so 14, which means you already have nine to start with. Everybody's going to get five cards, and it might be beneficial to just go ahead and go one, two, three, four, and five, or maybe you're going to want to go more aggressive and go one, two, three, and maybe four and five. And then finally, this guy here is gonna go one, two, three, four, and five. These are your player decks and they're also your stamina, which means when you run out of cards to play, you're basically going to bust and your character is gonna go womp, womp, womp. We can go ahead and move this board up a little bit. It's not gonna be needed for right now. And now everybody's got their player decks. And you don't need to shuffle them because this is your entire hand. And that's how you're going to start the game is using this, this hand of cards. And basically, uh, this active player is going to go first, which means that he's going to get to look through his hand and play any of his combat cards or any card that has a specific symbol in the upper left, which I believe has a little red dot on it. And he's also going to choose a character to fight against. So maybe um, Hilaris is going to go ahead and fight Akilla. So he'll go ahead and play this card, Cleave. And Cleave is a combat card. It says it up there. Akilla then has an opportunity to choose to parry or block the card. If they do that, then it's going to go to the next card and that whatever, the parry or block will have a specific effect and he'll have a chance to respond and it'll go back and forth. If he does not play a parry or a block to the cleave, then this little wing ability is going to activate and it says do a wound and you gain one pedal, which is a victory point. Then you can play a subdue card if you can, if it's in his hand. This player is going to look to see if he has a parry or a block and you go ahead and look in your shield areas. There's a, there's a parry right there. So he can go ahead and play that parry, negating the previous card. Now the parry obviously can be disarmed or grabbed, but if it's not, he can go ahead and play an additional combat card or you can play a disarm card. So he's going to look for a disarm or a grab. Do we have a disarm or a grab in here? Uh, we don't. So because he doesn't have one, then one of these options is going to be chosen by this player here. And this player is going to go ahead and choose to play a combat card. So he's going to go ahead and play a strike card, in which case this player can go ahead and choose to parry, dodge, or block. And he could do that. But maybe he doesn't want to, so he's going to go ahead and choose not to. When that happens, this player is going to go ahead and take a wound. This is going to go over to him. He has four total wounds. If he gets four, he's out. And that will end this player's turn. This one was who started the activation, so it'll move on to Akilla, who is now the active player. The active player will go ahead and choose one of the characters, use a combat card, and continue until eventually one of the gladiators is left standing. Like I said, there's a bunch of different defensive cards, and then there's some interesting ones like the disarm and the stagger cards, which will give you certain abilities on them. Uh, some of them there's choices, some of them there aren't, and some of them have these little symbols here, which says you get to instantly do one of these things when you play this card. Draw and keep two cards or recover. Some of them will allow you to switch targets with players, others will let you draw cards randomly from the deck deck or from your players, uh, the other players' hands, and in which case, basically you keep playing. If you run out of cards or cards to play, you're going to start taking damage to the point where you're, you're in trouble. Other things to note is sponsors can be played at random, or on your turn, I should say. It says once per combat, play this card after all bets have been placed to, in to increase or decrease the trophy gained uh, from a bet by one step. So it can go from a bronze to a silver. So that's a kind of interesting one. This one over here says once in a combat, when you discard a card, play this card to claim it back into your hand. So that's a nice one. Additionally, you'll have tactics and everybody's going to go ahead and choose one to start the uh, for each of the tournaments. So each player has gone ahead and chose one of these tactic cards. And these can also be played. Like this one says you can reveal this card to draw six cards and keep three from any of these decks. Others will say that you can gain combat cards or even shield cards as well. And the last and final thing that's interesting, I suppose, is this player board here, and it has the characters. Now, we talked about the type of character it is, how much health it has, and how much you get provided you bet on that character and they win. They're going to have a passive ability or an active ability of some type in which you can go ahead and flip, and that is going to basically counter another card. When you do that, it will not unflip until the end of your next turn. So you're going to have to wait one turn every time you chose to use this. And they usually have some type, type of ability, like this one here. It says you can play after... Uh, play after target uses a parry. 
card. Uh, target takes a wound. So that you can flip that card, make that player take a wound. Pretty useful, right? And the same will be said with all these. Additionally, each of these Ludus characters are going to have special abilities. Like, for instance, this one says he's famous for his large crowds. The gladiators fighting for this, this uh, school start each event with plus two crowd favor. So this character is actually going to start the event with plus two petals. This character over here has actually HP tokens that he can choose to give to his gladiators to give them more health to prevent them from death. And that's how it works. After somebody wins, then that player is going to go and check this event. The first player will get a certain trophy, and usually it'll be the larger one. So if they, let's say that uh, this guy here won. He would get one of these and can place on this board here, in which you'll have some basic active abilities that will give you certain things, whether it be favor or whatnot. The second player will get a smaller one. So let's go ahead and say that this player won. And then everybody can turn in their petals that they've earned for these tokens here, the bronze, the silver, and the gold favors, in which case they're trying to fill the board up. Now, depending on the type of game you're playing is you might actually, when that's all done with and you use this, uh, these things are going to be given, the rest of these will be given to the winning player so that they can get better rewards. You're going to go ahead and refresh everything, reset your decks, and then begin by selecting new characters after going ahead and checking to see if your gambling token paid off. Did Hilarious, uh, <laughs> did Hilarious Ficus win? In which case he did win. So he would actually get this character here would get one bronze medal thing here, or trophy here, because he chose the winning character, regardless of whether he won or not. And that's basically the idea of the game. It plays up to five players, and players can go back and forth fighting each other and having set different events. You can also be taking these characters here, shuffling them back in here, and new gladiators may pop out. As well as, when you use a tactics card, it's gone, and then you're going to have to choose a new tactics card just from the remaining of your Ludus uh, tactics deck. So it'll go from five, four, three, two, and one, until you don't have any anymore. Anyway, that's the idea of the game Gladiator's Blood for Roses. Let's go ahead and come up and I'll discuss the game a little bit and I'll tell you what I think about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Gladiator's Blood for Roses. And the first thing you're probably going to notice about this game, it has a lot of content and a lot of replayability because there's a ton of different gladiators and there's also the Luduses, which are basically schools technically, in which case you can kind of mix and match all of them. And every time you play a new tournament, there's going to be a new tournament card. There's going to be different variations of your passive abilities mixed in with your active ones. And you have the option to use those cards, as well as every gladiator has their own deck that also is mixed in with the basic cards that you can go ahead and choose between, whether you want to go for more aggressive combat or more defensive. Defensive cards are going to let you draw additional cards when you play them against other players, provided they don't get countered. And attack cards are going to do more damage. So if you're looking to push your opponent to its limits, you're going to want to go for defensiveness, because that's going to give you more cards to prevent yourself from going out. And if you want to kill your opponents, you're going to want to go for those attack cards. The other ones, which are the helmet, are kind of like, I call them like mastery cards, cards that can do some interesting things. They can grab your opponent. They can do some crazy dodges and all that cool stuff. And they'll let you do some interesting moves as well. The game is all about combos and creating your deck to make sure that the combos fit with each other. If you're looking for a certain card, you're going to need to draw it from a certain deck or from a certain player. It's not always in your best interest to win. Sometimes it's in your best interest to gain as much glory as you can, but still lose, because then you're able to get your victory condition, whether maybe you're going to bet on somebody else that you think is going to give you more valor or more, more bonus points than somebody else, or you're going to choose to bet on yourself because you're going to gain the most if you succeed. How much do you really think you're going to win this specific round? It's a really interesting, unique take. Now, this game I actually reviewed previously. And it's very similar to my previous take undertaking, with some exceptions, which are excellent. I love this board here, where you're going to be able to basically bid on the different uh, the different gladiators, and moving along this track here, pushing other players off, which will also cost you less um, negative points at the end of the game. But it might be worth it, because certain characters are definitely slightly stronger than others, based on the position they are on the field. So it feels like you're kind of betting against a horse race, but you are the horse racing. So it's interesting. You can choose to make yourself lose and that might actually help you but maybe not because maybe the person you wanted to win still lost anyway in which case it just cost you has that interesting that interesting little aspect to the game the fact that there's combos is really fun now there is a slight i guess issue in a two-player game for us where Obviously, there's still choices you can make, and there's cards you can flip over that make the change. It's not simply rock, paper, scissors when it comes to, oh, I don't have a block or a parry, in which case I'm going to have to take the strike. But there are cases where it's like your deck just doesn't have the cards to stop your opponent, in which case he can destroy you pretty quickly, pretty early on. 
But as you play, you start realizing what the characters do individually and how you can kind of set it up so that you're happy with what you have in your hand before you start the game off. In my opinion, with more players, it gets a lot more fun and a lot more crazy as you're choosing which person you want to battle against. The combos are flying out, the cards are flipping, you're changing different tactics, cards are coming out that you would not expect. And then sometimes you have stuff like strike, 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 and then you've dealt four damage to the character instantly in there and out of the game, which puts you in a great position. So it has that fun aspect of uh, the quality of artwork is excellent they've designed it even better than the previous one that i had taken a look at all of the cards here are really easy to understand as well and i'm a big big fan of roman games and this is no exception to that rule this one does a very good job of that if you like bidding if you like bluffing and if you like betting this is something i would definitely suggest taking a look at it is an aggressive game however and if you're going to play more than one tournament, which is very likely, it's likely to take a little longer. I would say it's probably going to take about a half an hour when you're at four players to play one full tournament. And you can play up to six of them, or when your board is filled, just depending on the different types of games you want to do, then it might just take a little longer. But overall, I really, really enjoyed this game, even more so than I did previously. And the more I play it, the more I'm starting to see the different combinations of the different gladiators. I love the fact that you can choose whether or not you want to kind of sway the odds in your favor or not, because it might not always be beneficial to you, which is a very interesting mechanic and a very interesting social way of playing the game. I'd be surprised how much social aspects come into a game like this that is very interesting. I know, it's just such a cool little game, such a cool concept. I really, really dig Gladiators Blood for Roses. Definitely go and check out down below if this game sounds interesting to you. And if not, let me know down below in the comments as to why not. All right, guys, thanks as always. Let's go ahead and hit that drill. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Down the tabletop, go ahead and take a look at Gladiators for Roses down below in the Kickstarter if you want to pick this game up. I recommend it. It's fun. If you like this type of game, I think you're going to dig into this one. As well as take a look at my website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. As well as don't forget to go ahead and check our live streams. Every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST, we're giving away games. We're playing games live just like this one here. And this week is no exception. Hats coming tomorrow. I'll be having this out hopefully by Tuesday, so you can go ahead and check out our live stream on Wednesday. Also, our friends, bam, 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 Giveaway Geek, uh, Everything Board Games, and Cardboard Stacker, tons of great people with other great content that you should check out. Thanks, guys, as always. And a new little interesting thing, we do have a Patreon now, which is mainly for our live streamers, but there's some cool stuff that we add, the additional content and some new, new playlists and unique stuff that's going to be coming out this week. If you're interested in supporting me in that way, even a, bu a buck is going to go a long way, and it's going to give you a bunch of additional content that's different than reviews. It's going to be actually interesting... Um gameplay techniques and uh, stuff like what makes a game uh, good in my opinion all that kind of stuff so if you're interested in that patreon go ahead and support us there if not thank you guys for watching and as always i look forward to battling with you in the coliseum next time oh so cute so cute